Seahawks continue their playoff push in Seattle. Or will the Jets win in Oaktown, spoil their postseason plans? The Pats clinched their first division crown since 97. How does that fit into the Dolphins' playoff equation? Does Michael Strahan set a new sack? Mark? Can the Bears clinch their first NFC Central crown in 11 years? Will the Rams claim home field advantage? Hey, we're a talented bunch. NFL Prime Time! Have it up next! NFL Primetime is presented by Miller Lights. Primetime is Miller Time. And now, here's your host, Chris Berman. Well, 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 well. Welcome to week 17 of Subbub. I say Sunday NFL Primetime, not Tom Jackson that there's a Monday one, but the season is going to the final Monday. Eat the guy. Yeah, I, I was going to say we've watched uh, 17 weeks of football into Sunday evening, and we still don't know the complete scenario for the playoffs. Very interesting, and an interesting result out, a couple of interesting late results yes. out west in the AFC, but we'll get to that. Yes. Why, why don't we start with the team that already knew where it was going, but... Let's go to a game in the snow, like you like to see a little bit. Come playoff time, Bill Cowher at Heinz Field, but wrong condiments instead of ketchup. <laughs> what is that, sugar or salt or what is that? They're playing the Cleveland Browns who won big last week, and the Steelers were shocked by the Bungles. Lexico Burris off his hands. Raymond Jackson, one of the many Tom Jackson cousins in football, makes the pick. Then Quincy Morgan, double reverse. Timmy Couch out there to try to throw a block, at least show him the way in the snow. And it's a ball down to the four-yard line, and Cleveland's in business. Yeah, Tim Couch does a great job here of leading the reverse for Quincy Morgan. Puts his head on a swivel, sees what's around him. But, son, get out of the way if you're not going to throw a block. For the fifth straight week, Jerome Bettis not playing. They thought if it was a dry field, he would play. Obviously, it's not. So, Cordell Stewart going to the air. Plexico Burris, 21 yards. And then, one of the best names in all of football. It's a swing pass to Chris Uumatu Mafala. Uh, they you, say that cat's a bad Mafala. Shut your mouth. But I'm talking about Malafala. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Mafala, 17 yards. He is bad. Touchdown, 7 all. Later in the second quarter, 7-7. Seven, seven. We got Mafala. We got Kimo Von Orhorsen. He pushes Jeremy McKinney into counts. He gets credit for the sack. Then Tommy Kendrell Bell. Yeah, look at the closing speed by Kendrell Bell right there. There's about three linebackers in the league. You're going to see two of them during these highlights that can close like that on the quarterback. Four sacks today. They tie with 55 sacks. Uh, that's a, a new Steeler record. Ties the steal. At any rate, Ben Gay. He tried to warm up in the beginning of the third quarter, but he fumbles it, and Troy Edwards picks up the gift, and the Steelers have a 14-10 lead. Later in the third, 14-7. Amazing. We took three points off the board. Cordell comes in again. Here he is. Cordell out. Tommy Maddox in. That was Heinz Ward for his thousand. Plexigo Burris for his thousand. Swan and Stoll were together. Never got a thousand yards. Same season. But Heinz Ward and Plexigo Burris have a thousand yards receiving. And then it's Puma to Ben Mafala. 25 yards. Later leaves the game with an injured groin. Anthony Henry with the pick. And that would be for him his 10th. So only the eighth player to get double digit pick sits in the last 20 years. Meanwhile, Tommy Maddox to Bobby Shaw breaks a tackle. 40 yards. Maddox, XFL refugee, coming in and actually moving the ball well just in case they need him. But Pittsburgh has already known. Week off. And then two games at Heinz Field, their next game not at home if they keep winning, would be the Super Bowl. But first things first, no fuss. Hey, look, Pittsburgh won. The defense allowed just the seven points. Good or bad performance by Pittsburgh today? Not, not bad, Tommy, but, I mean, look, they win going into the playoffs with some steam, but yet a, a I, question I, or two for the I, number one I team. I thought after their performance last week against the Bengals, the most important thing was to win the football game. Uh, but I think you're certainly uh, concerned about the fact that Jerome Bettis, when he plays in what will be the divisional round of the playoffs, that it will be almost a month since he's played football. The speed of the game will increase. I'll think, also, I think a little bit of concern because Cord Cordell Stewart, 
Stanford had two what I would call subpar football games as they now get ready for the playoffs. Well, so so you win, you're winning, you got home field advantage, you're going to be playing at Heinz Field, but I think your two best players offensively certainly have to be a little bit concerned. Well, you got two weeks to get it together. That's you correct. are 13 and That's 3. Correct. Here's an example of one of the many teams that finished strong last December, yes. carrying it into this year, and they're rolling. So they're the one seed. What about the two seed? What about the champ of the AFC East? New England might have answered several of those questions. There at Carolina, a lot of people disguised as empty seats, 21,000, to watch the Panthers play Bill Belichick's New England Patriots. Panthers trying to avoid 15 straight losses. No team has ever done that, but very early on, I fought the law and the law won. Ty Law picks off Chris Winkie. It's 10 nothing Patriots. Then, next play after kickoff, ball tip, Otis, my man, Smith. Look at Otis into the end zone. Two straight picks. Here's a touchdown, but wait, the interception stays, but holding on the return. Certainly wasn't needed to the Patriots get the ball, but not the touchdown. Fourth and two, Antoine Smith, and the Patriots are looking for a round late second quarter. Fourth and goal for the one, but Smith, it's a fumble. Mike Mitcher has it for Carolina. Now, wait a minute. Look at this. Is this Drew Bledsoe? Or is it Al Gore? I, I, I don't recognize either guy anymore. 10-3 at the half. Witness protection program. Todd Sauerbrunn, one of the great years of, of all punters. Why not? He punted more than anybody else. But he outkicks the coverage. And Troy Brown has man of renown. He's gone. 68 yards. He's a thousand yard receiver. And again, a return for a punt. George Seifert has seen it all go this way. Classic case of out kicking your coverage. You can see that when Troy Brown received the football, nobody within 15, 20 yards of him. He runs through the first wave. It's at least eight guys, then just a sprint for the end zone. Interesting that New England would have trouble against Richard Huntley. This is not the Huntley Brinkley report, but Richard Huntley had 15 yards. Tommy, it continues, and they're running between tackles. Yeah, the sweep for 15, and then off the edge for another 19 yards to the right side. You see him make the cut back onto safety and get up the field really quickly, and then to the left side again for another nine-yard gain. So. That's another thing now. New England Patriots have to be concerned about their rush defense going into the playoffs. 168 yards for Huntley, but meanwhile, did you say rushing Antoine Smith following blockers? 32-yard touchdown of the Patriots now drawing it out. Lead it 24-6. And then Otis didn't get the touchdown, but Otis, my man, gets this touchdown. He could go off the... Wait a minute, let me size up Winky. Wait, he's gone. Touchdown, defense, six turnovers. Please, Steve Spurrier, says one fan, <laughs> calm. Bill Belichick, the, the not Natalie clad, now he's the wettily clad Bill Belichick. Hey, congratulations to the New England Patriots. They began the year 0-2, and now they are champs of the AFC East, an unlikely champion, but a champion that goes in with a six-game winning streak and a Pro Bowl quarterback from nowhere, Tom Brady with Hank Goldberg. What about you? You know, coming from when the team was 0-2 and you take over, did you dream it would come to this? Well, I, I really think you prepare for, you know, that when your number's called to be ready to play. And, you know, each week it's about getting better and learning. And, and you know, being a young quarterback, you realize you're, you're going to learn every week. And some days are better, some days are better than others as I'm, I'm continuing to learn. So the Patriots, well, all right, they're a little rush problem. Look, 11 and 3 after an 0 2 start. Yeah, offense has great balance. We saw the 21 carries for 81 yards for Antoine Smith, but they were 36 for 102 overall. It's a portable game plan. It works in all weather. And we'll tell you whether they got a buy or not later on. 15 straight defeats will probably be in the end on Monday for George Seifert, a very classy coach. Speaking of classy, Emmett Smith going for the record book and Peyton Manning trying to have a good game. The 211th and final game in the NFL, the Pontiac Silverdome, open in 75, Lions-Cowboys. All the first cold weather Super Bowl. Niners won Super Bowl 60, 93,000 to WrestleMania. 93,000 saw the Pope. Almost that many saw Elvis. And so many more marveled in Barry Sanders and all the wondrous things he could do, including right here in 1991, the only Lion playoff win. That's the 91 season, the only Lion playoff win since 1957. All that coming to a close today. And a little history on the other side of the ball. Emmitt Smith, 10 straight thousand yard seasons tied with Barry Sanders. Here he is with 28. 
Here he is with 13. And there he is with the record, 11 straight and 11 at any time, breaking the dual mark he held with Barry, 77 yards for Emmett, congratulations. But when Ty Detmer and Johnny Morton and the Lions led with five and a half minutes ago, why not do an electric worm? You're one in 14. I mean, you know what, why not? Emmett, oh boy, I did the record, but that's this. And the Lions fans say, hey, we're gonna go downtown to another dome stadium, but the Detroit Lions, uh-oh, they're now the third draft pick. The Lions beat the Cowboys 15 to 10 and close out the Silver Dome yeah, to win. And I think for the Dallas Cowboys, the story for this season is they may have discovered their quarterback in Quincy Carter, a guy who improved throughout the regular season. And Emmett Smith with 16,187 yards, he's about 550 short of Walter Payton's all-time record. Marty Schottenheimer, Redskins, home against Arizona. Tony Banks picked off by Adrian Wilson. 61 yards. These teams trying to get to 500, finishing at 8-8. Eight eight. Whoever the winner would be, 7-0 cards. Dan with the score, 17-12 cards in the fourth. Banks hit by Marcus Bell. Down, he's hurt. Hobbles off the field. Knee problem. Kent Graham in a quarterback. And so down 17, 12, and third and seven. Graham avoiding the sack. The shovel pass to Kajana Carter in the rainstorm. First down. Third and goal from the three. Stephen Davis will have a buck 48. It's a touchdown. About an 0-5 start for Marty Schottenheimer, finishing at 8-8. Eight eight. Good job, Marty. Excellent job. Washington wins 20 to 17. Yeah, that 8-3 finish driven by the fact that they finally got the Marty Schottenheimer game, game plan. You run the ball, 38 carries, 148 yards. Stephen Davis, minimal play action pass, play good defense. That'd be interesting next year to watch that football team. Not going for 500, but improvement for sure since Nick LeBeau took over in the middle of last year for Cincinnati. And Bruce Matthews, would this be the final game? He's not saying. Man that began and played in Pro Bowls almost every year since he was an Oiler in 83. Neil O'Donnell in for McNair in the second half to Derek Mason. Tennessee leads Cincinnati 21-20. Mason 9 for 186. A pair of touchdowns. Now, Cincinnati with seven minutes to go is only down by one. And what's this play? Corey Dillon picked off by Greg Favors on the on the halfback option. Yeah, certainly you would have thought they would settle to be in a position to kick the field goal and take the lead, but but they didn't. John Kidna off the hands of Corey Dillon to Deron Jenkins. Jeff Fisher thinks the game is sealed, but no, it's an incomplete pass. And so, new life with a minute and a half to go down 21-20. Kidna, who threw for 400 last week against Pittsburgh. To Darnay Scott, 39 yards. Scott, 9 for 152. Neil Rackers, he's an adventure, but he won last week's game, and he's getting ready. 34-yard field goal for the win. Big good. It's good. Rackers racks up the winner. And for Bruce Matthews, look at him as an oiler. Will this be his final game? Certainly a disappointing 7-9 season for Tennessee. And small steps for the Bengals, who won their first two, won their last two, beating Pittsburgh and Tennessee. Yeah, Good job yeah, by Dick. Yeah, amongst yeah. those victims, I was going to say, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Tennessee Titans, they also beat the defending world champs earlier in the season, yep. in their season with two wins. Something to look forward to for Dick LeBeau and his crew. So the Denver Broncos going into Indianapolis, and it's been, along with Tennessee, a disappointing season big time for the Colts. Archie Manning, Bob Greasy. Now it's Peyton Manning and it's Brian Greasy. The fathers to the sons. Greasy picked off by Raymond Walls. Two picks and two possessions, and Brian has had some interception problems. Yeah, and I think he was waiting for Scotty Montgomery to come back to the football. Nice cut under, underneath by Raymond Walls for the, for the intercept. Dominique Rhodes, after Edgerin James gets hurt, he came from nowhere, the undrafted rookie. He's the first one ever to rush for over 1,000 yards, and most of it's coming in the last two and a half months. Congratulations to a nice young man, Manning to Harrison, Marvin 11 yards, Peyton three straight years, 4,000 yards. It's not a team season he would like, but individually he hasn't lost as much. Manning to Harrison, 20 yards, toasting Delta O'Neal, and the Colts go on to spank the Broncos for the count of 29-10.
be interesting to see where they go next year. At least they avoid giving up 500 points. It was close, and, but they avoided it at the end. And I don't know of any team more disappointed in their season than the Denver Broncos, and it'll be reflected in some of the players who are on that team now missing next year. You think cuts are going on on the flight? They're going on as we speak. <laughs> when we return, Packers. San Francisco 49ers, a year ahead of schedule, playing the New Orleans Saints last year on the division. They went marching out, though, this year. And Jeff Garcia said, you know what? My defense is going to make plays like this by Derek Smith getting a gift from Ricky Williams. Then you know what we're going to do? We're going to go up top like the old Niners. Very first play. Oh, there it is. Terrell Owens down the sidelines, 56 yards. That quickly, 7-0 San Francisco. Time. Yeah, take another look at the play. You're going to see the safety, Jay Bellamy, going to sneak up to the line of scrimmage. Fred Thomas, the corner, is isolated right there on T.O. His head is in the backfield. He glances at Terrell Owens. By the time he looks back, it's too late to make the turn. That's as easy a score as Owens is going to get this year. Bellamy, one of the Bellamy brothers who let his love grow. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Garcia to Terrell Owens. Tommy, he caught two balls for 116. What an economical day for Terrell Owens and Garcia, the first Niner quarterback, which means something. Needless to say, 30 touchdown passes mm. two straight years. Mm. Steve didn't do it. Joe didn't do it. Jeff Garcia's done it. Oh, Ricky Williams did it. It's another fumble. Hey, Jamie Winborn pulls on it for the Niners. And the thing you notice, the hits were never right on the football. Just somehow got away from it. So Garcia faints, hits another one of your cousins, Terry Jackson. <laughs> Six yards, 21-0 Niners at the half. Three TD passes Garcia. Aaron Brooks trying to make something happen. Gets away from Bryant Young. And then he is picked off. He knows something. Lance Sergeant Childers. Leads to a field goal, 24-0. And then, I think the Saints are really playing hard here. I, I, no. It's Stokes with the touchdown from Garcia and then another fumble for Ricky Williams. He gets it, kind of. That's pathetic. This is Mooch's look and his 12th win. And you know what? This is where the Saints need to go. Because they gave up 40 straight on Sunday night. and They gave up 78 unanswered points. Meanwhile, here's San Francisco with 12 and 4. Good, probably only enough for a road game in the playoffs. Amazing. Yeah, and, and yet you think about their game, game plan. Again, a mobile game plan. The 41 rushes, 138 yards, 269 yards passing. No INTs and playing good, solid rush defense. It's If you're going to be successful in the playoffs, this is the game plan that works. This is as good a road opening playoff team. Good hands with Allstott. Mike Allstott on the box at home and Sunday Night Football against the Eagles, a team they will know very well after the next two weeks. And here we go with the Green Bay Packers needing to win for possibly the central side, you gotta love this. In New York, dad, son. You know what, mom made us these sandwiches. Eh, what do you think? Eh, yeah, I like it. I like it. A lot of Packers fans in New York to watch Brett Favre, your football fan, you wanna watch Brett Favre. Michael Strahan, needing a sack to pass. Mark Gastineau's all-time record of 22 sacks in one season. Early on, Strahan, who had, what, three and a half last week? Being blocked, and then there's this problem of Brett Favre being mobile. Well, Brett Favre has that ability to escape the rush, knows exactly when to get rid of the football. Here, Mark Tauscher at the tackle position, great job of blocking and keeping his hands out. Finally, he gets a little bit of pressure on Brett, but again, you see Brett get rid of the football just in time. And look at this, guys are good friends. It, you know, this is him and Sapp, him and Strahan. I mean, it's just, it, it's all about football with Brett and with Strahan. Meanwhile, Jason Seahorn out. Brett Favre working on the giant corners. Bill Schrader deep beats Dave Thomas. 7-0 pack. 31 TDs at this point for Brett Favre. Terry Collins. Picked off by Darren Sharper. Reads it perfectly. It's hog tie, but the pack in business. And very early again in the game, I'm on green. Held in check last week, but not today. 25-yard touchdown very quickly. Pack, pack, pack. In six and a half minutes, up 14-0 in the Meadowlands. Third quarter, the score, 24-10, Packers, Favre, picked off by Dave Thomas. But wait a minute, this, this one's shaky, and asked, 
Jim Fossil his opinion. Well, they, they call the interference. You can see how disappointed Dave Thomas is right there, as well as Coach Fossil, as he comes down the sideline talking to the officials. We'll take another look at the plate. You can see that Dave Thomas running stride for stride. He's actually in front of Schrader and using the sideline perfectly. That's a horrible call by the officials. Banks end up with a field goal. Fossil still lets them hear about it. Why not? 27-10. Five to Corey Bradford, 54 yards this time. Thomas is English muffin, and it's 34 to 10. Meanwhile, under three minutes to go as you watch Red celebrate. The sack has not happened yet. And now you decide. They talk about it right before this play. Kind of in reverse. And Bubba Franks doesn't block. And Michael Strahan has a hello sack. 22 and a half. There's Gastineau out of the record book. Yeah, it, it's a great moment for Michael Strahan and, and probably as easy a sack as you're ever going to see Brett Favre give up. Uh, Brett starting to roll right in it. You see how much respect Brett has for Michael and, and vice, vice versa. versa. And, and look, this is a great scene. Gastineau and Strahan. You saw Strahan hug his coach. But three times they made the Super Bowl, three times the Giants away in the wind the next year. 0 for 3 and making the playoffs after Super Bowl season. So, after the Packers win 34-25 and the sack doesn't happen till late, everyone was asked, was this a gimme sack, boys? No, I didn't. Um, like I said, it was a keep pass. Um, keep pass is where you fake a run and go the other way. That's not the first time where I faked a run without uh, uh, anyone knowing. And, and this time when I turn, uh, uh, Michael's right there. Uh, call it what you want. Oh, trust me. When you see a quarterback sitting there right in your face, you're like, just don't throw the dog on ball. That's just what I was thinking because he'd done it to me all day. I'm laying on the I'm laying on the ground listening to the crowd to see if I was dreaming or if um, I'd, I'd really done it. And and then I hear all the guys and the coming over and it was it was it was man. I had to fill in a disbelief. When we leave today on that plane, we want to make sure we leave as winners. And uh, and Michael Strahan, he, he left the field today as a winner. Very classy. Kyle, look, 22 and a half sacks. You don't need to apologize to anybody. Neither did the Packers at 12 and 4, assuring themselves of at least a home game. Where, by the way, 12 and 0 lifetime at home for the Packers in Pack the playoffs. Packers can beat anybody because they have a good team and they have Brett Favre. 15 of 30 for 350 yards is what he's capable of anywhere. And they kept firing. You know what you want? The sack record, we're going to keep it. <laughs> we're not going to run it. it hey, Soldier Field, they're going to remodel it after this year. But hold the phone. The Bears are going to be home. And Gale Sayers, Mike Singletary, Richard Dent, Gary Fensick, so many of the Bears, 35 all-time Bears back to see what was going to be the last regular season game. And they saw defense, Alfonso Boone, Roosevelt, Colvin, and then they saw more defense by Brian Urlacher. Yeah, you saw it for Kendrell Bell earlier. Look at the closing speed right there by Brian Urlacher. It's like a running back speed in a linebacker's body. And then here's a running back in a linebacker's body. The A-Train, Anthony Thomas, levels Ainsley. It's Ainsley battles, and it's a first down. Bears against the wind going for it on fourth and eight. Hey, who better to play in the Windy City than the Bears? And Jim Miller to Marty Booker, the first Bear with 100 receptions for the season ever. Congratulations, first down. Leon Johnson, touchdown, 10-0 Chicago over Jacksonville. Now in the third quarter with the score 13-0. Mark Brunel, the play, one of the plays of the year. Keith Trailer, whoop, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. The tractor trailer. Let me laugh. No, let me keep it. No, let me. No, let me look for it. No, let me. Oh, Keith Trailer. 67 yards inside the 10. Yeah, it's certainly worth a second look. And let's remember that Keith Trailer came into the league as a linebacker, and he showed all those tools today. The great hands right there, but look at him. He actually makes a nice cut to the outside, avoids the tackler, shifts the ball to the outside hand, looks, this slowdown right here, looks to cut inside, says, no, I'm going back outside. Does anybody else want the football? Well, they tried to get the football. Keith Tractor Trailer, a hero. I was surprised because, you know, there was a lot of people around me. It was a screen play, and 
when the ball landed in my hands, I'm like, you know, there's two or three people, but once I got going, I'm like, they, they're getting ready to get me. They got to get me. <laughs> oh, you know, it was one of those things, you know, I, I did the best I could, you know. I was trying to get there, and they, they got me, but, you know, it was a big play at the time. Like a one-man convoy coming down the field. Big play by Tractor Trailer. And then, off that, Jim Miller, David Terrell, nine yards, 20-0 the Bears. And with a big lead, they want to seal it with the running game, Tom, and they got the rookie to do it, the A-Train, Anthony Thomas. Yeah, A-Train here just watching, follow his blockers. He's a great inside runner. He's very quick to the hole. He avoids at the line of scrimmage. They're a nice 20-yard gain. Look at him again here. He spots the hole outside this time. He's great at getting through. His linemen love him for that. He hits the holes on time. And then down around the goal line, just pounding his way in. 33 carries, 160 yards. And yes, the chance of the NFC Central for the first time since 1990. And defensive coach Greg Blosh gets the wet treatment. The Chicago Bears in 16 games, Tom, allowed 203 points. Two shutouts. Three other games in single digits. Here's another one in low double digits. The Chicago Bears, by wrapping up the Norris, or at least the two seed, and they were waiting to see if they could be the one seed. You talk about coming out of nowhere, but this is a team clearly playing with big-time momentum. An outstanding defense, I think, is where you begin. You talk about the points given up. You've got a quarterback who understands not making mistakes. Jim Miller, again, no interceptions today. And when you think about all these teams, New England Patriots, San Francisco 49ers, Chicago Bears, teams headed to the playoffs, they all did it the same way. They ran the football. You run the football, you play outstanding defense, and you take the pressure off your quarterback. And somebody's going to have to go play the Bears in Chicago. Maybe a couple of teams. Yes, maybe a couple of teams. 13-3 and three for Dick Geron and the Chicago Bears. And we talk about some of the changes that we've seen this year with the Chicago Bears. Brian Erlocker, Mike Brown, Holden and linebacker, and the names go on. You saw Trailer and Teddy Washington. They won eight more games than last year. They allowed almost 150 points less than last year. They more than half... They're allowed touchdowns from later. I would say this is a team on the improvement part of the report card. Teacher fills it out A++. Inside the Numbers is brought to you by Visa. It's everywhere NFL fans want to be. When we return, the Rams now had to win it to get the number one all right, now we go to the late games. The always entertaining St. Louis Rams. See, we got this, we got this, we got this. We don't have home field yet because the Bears won. So, Isaac Bruce out of the game with back spasm. Oh, they don't have any more weapons. Tom against Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, they do. Kurt Warner to Michael, Michael, Michael. 21 yards, four, four straight seasons. Over 2,000 total yards, breaking the mark. He shared with Walter Payton. Now the tight end, when they use him, he's also dangerous. Ernie Conwell, 17-3 Rams. Two and a half minutes left, second quarter. Michael Vick, some of the plays he made last week, we marvel that. Tries to escape, but it, it, oh, it's a fumble, and the Rams recover. What an improvement they made on defense this year, Tom. But then Vick... He can just do it. Well, this is what he's capable of. This is the natural athleticism. A gain of 20 down to the four. He does it in a flash. And, and, and once he learns how to play, I think he's going to be a spectacular football player. He has nowhere to go here, though. That's all Rams defense. And one of their rookies, Adam Archuleta, forces the Falcons to kick a field goal 17-6. That's the score at the half. We go to the third quarter. But what about Kurt Warner using Ernie Conwell? And he watch him, the big fella, say, hey, we're not all about speed. We're about, we're about that. Down to the five-yard line, a 47-yard gain, and then Marshall Falk, three-yard touchdown, 24-6, Rams. Ensuing kickoff. Atlanta used to have Tim Dwight to do it, now they've got Derek Falk. And this is a problem for the Rams, their special teams coverage teams. This will be a problem for them in the playoffs. Gone! Derek Vaughn all the way, 96 yards. Hey, it's 24-13. Just seconds left in the third quarter. Same score, and it's Warner shampooing one to Ricky Prohl. Eight yards, touchdown, Prohl out of pair, 31-13 Rams. And then fans get the ball, another fumble, Mike Vick. Marshall, 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 spinning, running, 
Juki, Giants, 52 yards. 20 carries, a buck 68. Yep, we got home field. The St. Louis Rams had 14 and two, have scored, they win it 31-13. They've scored 503 points, three straight years that they've gotten over 500 points. Marshall Falk is over 2,000 yards. And then this one, Tom, Kurt Warner has the second greatest single season passing mark ever. Only Marino in 84 had more than Warner's 48-30. But 44 turnovers. 44 turnovers, best team in football, best player in football. I think the only team that can beat the Rams in the playoffs is the Rams, and we'll find that out over the course of the next wow, Almost 5,000 yards, though. Amazing. Meanwhile, this is one of the most interesting stories of the season. Trent Dilfer starting his fourth game in relief of an injured Matt Hasselbeck. Two earlier, two now. And if the Seahawks win, they could get in the playoffs. Dilfer, 3-0 this year with Seattle. To Daryl Jackson, they hooked up twice last week. Here's a touchdown against Kansas City in the rain. 7-0 Seahawks on the flubber. Dilfer, Jackson got your cousin. I was getting ready to say, this is definitely one of my He's cousins. a first cousin. 16 <laughs> yards, 14-0 for Dilfer and the Seahawks. Last play of the half. What do you do? Knock it down. Trent Green throws it. It's knocked away. And Tony Gonzalez, brain left knee on the play, did not return. But Kansas City's going to get in the game. When Glenn Cadrez rocks the punt of Jeff Philadelphia Eagles, Jason Belzer is on it. They mark it at the one top. Yeah, the snapper there, Jean-Philippe Darche. Uh, you see Glenn Cadrez go right around his left shoulder. Never got inhibited. Comes in, great block of the kick. The French were never great at snapping and blocking, you know? And then a play action, Trent Green to Michael Ricks. And the Chiefs have cut it to 14 to 7. Now it's 14-10. But look at Sean Alexander. He had so many big runs today, Tommy. 44 yards. Power and speed. And got some blocks. Yeah, James Williams, wide receiver here, gonna do a great job of stealing the outside. Just watch him. He comes in. Right here, you want to stay up and get your seal right there and Sean Alexander is off to the races. Alexander, 20 carries, 127 yards. Meanwhile, the Seahawks hold on to win it, a score and a two-point conversion late, but the Seahawks win to go 9-7, 21-18. Trent Dilfer throwing for 248 yards. Let's see, he had a 4-0 Seattle. 11 and 1 Baltimore. 5 and 0 his last 5 and 10 for 99. He is 20 and 1. And if either the Jets or the Ravens lose, Seattle is in. Miami looking for seeding spots. Late game against Buffalo. He's going to be a big guy tonight for the Eagles in Sunday night football. Miami Dolphins. Knowing New England had won, now trying to lock up a home game. Defensive coordinator Jim Bates trying not to let the Buffalo Bills, who upset the Jets last week, continue to upset the contenders. Jason Taylor's had a big year at defensive end, Tom. Yeah, here he gets up field on the wide rush, does a great job of tackling Bryson. And again, let's watch him spot shadow right here. Again, Jason Taylor doing his job, getting up field, getting around the tackle. He disrupted the play enough where his teammates could come in, help out again. Another run for a loss. Dolphins have 13 points at the half, and the Bills at only 13 yards. Taylor, Travis, by the Bills recovered. Now, we should say that Alex Van Pelt got hurt in the first quarter. He had played very well, injured his right shoulder. So, young Travis Brown from Northern Arizona, the Lumberjacks, was in and he's a fumble and wouldn't you know it there's jason taylor on the ball meanwhile jay fiedler with his team up 20 to 7. takes out antoine winfield fiedler can do this miami is seven and one at home so getting a whole playoff game pretty important for him four minutes to go lamar smith now here's the powerful run that we saw last year. Yeah, and the 30 carries for 158 yards is what drove the Miami Dolphins last year. Where has this been in terms of consistency? And here's Brock Barry, and you talk about Johnny on the spot. Remember the big Monday night game? He could go all the way. A rarity, a 100-yard interception return. Wow! 34-7. Miami wins it. And by doing so, Ensures themselves, well, 
of at least a home game. But we're going to explain it to you. And any other late results. Bolts had a better game, but look, the numbers aren't great, but running and defense and managing games and Miami, they're good at home. It was the game plan for Dave Wanstead and his team from the beginning of the year. We're going to have an outstanding defense led by Jason Taylor and Zach Thomas. We're going to run with Lamar Smith, and we're going to ask Jay Fiedler to manage. Ran for 202 yards, had the ball for almost 36 minutes. And now, the game of the day, John Gruden's team has lost three of five, two of their last three at home. They may want to win. Biddy Testaverde, controversial week for the Jets. They need to win. They have not won in Oakland in nine tries since 1962. But very quickly, Testaverde, Deliverde is cold. Get the blocks gone. Second play from scrimmage, 7 nothing J.E.T. Yeah, 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 and look at the offensive linemen right here. Kerry Jenkins and Kevin Mawai do a great job of getting outside. Santana Moss downfield, wide receiver throwing a nice block to spring Lavernius Coles to the end zone. Raiders get a field goal at 7-3 on third and six. Rich Cannon to Jerry Rice. Great catch, 16 yards. Same drive, but we're second quarter now. And in a quiet year, certainly for Tyrone Wheatley. But there's a power run. We haven't seen a lot of that for the Raiders, Tom. 9-7, and now the extra point. Remember, Sebastian Janikowski hurt. Cellulitis foot. Brad Dom DeLuiso. Cooking like Dom, kicking like Dom DeLuise. Maybe cooking like Dom DeLuise. And so he missed it. It's just a 9-7 game. Jim Leckler go to the Pro Bowl, but Chris Hayes, who's a special teams gem, comes in. Jason Glenn recovers. Touchdown Jets. 14-9. But then he's picked off. Here go the Raiders. Just before half. Roland Williams wide open. Gannon finds him. What a good game. 16-14. Raiders at the half. Lamont George, not Curtis Martin, Lamont George, he's just gone, 46 yards, Jets go up 21-19 in the third, DeLuiso, 28-yard field goal, oh. and Gruden and the Raiders still down 21-19, fourth quarter, Curtis, my favorite, Mark, and some important runs, certainly not big numbers for Martin on this day. But Eric Allen strips it. Raiders recover. 37-yard field goal. Good. Delaware so good. It's 22-21. So Oakland leading with 2.28 to go. But on third and three, Roland Williams is overthrown, and they're forced to punt. Jets ball. Now it's third and ten. Vinny rolling out to Europe at XFL. Kevin Swain, he's played football for 51 weeks up to midfield. And then to Cole, 11 yards. A 53 on attempt by John Hall. What a hole by Tom Tupa. Good. He's good. 53 yards. Look at the play by Tupa. Yeah, the snap was low. Tupa, great job of getting it down and getting the ball set so that Hall could get through it. The New York football Jets are in the playoffs. Under Herm Edwards, the New York football Jets have won in Oakland for the first time since they were the New York Titans at Frank Yule Field. Long gone, 1962. And now, here's the scenario. The Jets and Seahawks won, which means Baltimore must win Monday night to get in. If they do, Seattle falls out, Pittsburgh is won, New England is two, Oakland is three, Miami is four, that stays the same. Baltimore would be five and be at Miami, and the Jets are six, so they haven't won in Oakland for 39 years, and now they got to do it twice in one week. Now, if Minnesota, with head coach Mike Miami Tice, going up against a former fellow coach, Brian Billick, if they win, Seattle gets in. And so one, two, three, four stay the same. Jets would be at the Dolphins, who they've beaten seven straight times, and Seattle would be in Oakland. New England gets a bye. Meanwhile, in the NFC, Rams one, Bears two, opening week fives. Philly hosts Tampa Bay, we've known that already, and Green Bay, who's never lost a home playoff game, they host San Francisco in one of the fine wild card games we can remember. When we return, game ball and an emotional Jim Mora as questions circle in Indianapolis. And players is brought to you by 1010 to 20. Dial it and all calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents.
boom, how can my game ball not go to Keith Trailer, former linebacker, two tackles, but the 67-yard interception return was one of the great plays we've seen this entire year. And what a find and a gem he has been for the Chicago Bears. Sums up the Bears, and my game ball is going to a sum up of a team that, you know what, when you haven't won in a place for 30 nine years herm edwards the new york jets everything swirling in new york you did it you got to the playoffs doing it the hard way game balls hey could go a lot of places anthony thomas and jeff garcia and strahan with the record and green a lot of big time players in week 17. jim mora has been a classy coach for a long time and a winning coach for a long time will he be back with the colts here first his comments after the game a win over denver Am I emotional? You're damn right I'm emotional. I apologize. I will not quit. I want to coach here. And I should be the coach here. No word from the Colts, from Bill Polian, Jimmy Hersey. They said they decide after the season. At least, I'm sure they would want wholesale defensive coaching changes. Who knows? But they will decide quickly. They, they will decide stay or not very quickly. Uh, that's just that's just tough to see. There's yeah, a lot of good things. And, and, and I think there will be input coming from a lot of places. But certainly, uh, the one thing we do know is this. That's one of the fine men to have ever coached yes, in this league. Absolutely. And that's something to be Ab remembered. Absolutely. Congrats to those who are in. Is that one spot lingering? Can the champs get back in? Priest Holmes is the rushing champ. Rod Smith, the receiving champ with 113. Tom Jackson, Chris Berman, hopefully we're champs. Thanks for watching NFL Primetime.